Today, I'm gonna to be taking you through my workout routine. I'm training for an ultra marathon, but at the same time, I do gymnastic green calisthenics. So check it out and get moving. Let's go. Time for my run now. Uh, I'm just gonna do a quick 5k um, in the barefoot shoes. We'll get moving with that lovely day today. Super hot, but oh, it's nice. And off we go. Something I massively underestimate uh, if I'm running is the hamstring drive and engagement. So when you're running, it should always be almost like you're falling forward, catching yourself on your feet. But especially wearing, when wearing bare foot shoes, you have to have good form, otherwise you, you'll, you'll feel it. Um, so essentially, rather than just falling forward and plodding on the feet, which sends a lot of impact to the knees, you want to almost drive your heels back a bit, flick them up at the back, and that will get a decent amount of hamstring engagement there. So, if you want to see the difference, check this out. You can see I'm landing very forward on the feet rather than dragging back. Now watch this one. Now the major difference is my hamstring is coming back and it's not like I'm kicking back super far. Um, naturally the slower pace you go, the less you'll have to drive because the further out your stride gets, the more hamstring drive you need. So it's only a little bit, just a little bit of hamstring engagement can really make a difference of falling and hurting the knees to dragging and floating. Look how beautiful these buildings are, man. So this is a straight stretch down the park I'm going around. And on Strava, it's around a kilometer and the record is 3 minutes 11, which is a solid pace. I've tried it, but uh, definitely not running at the pace I was when I was maybe eight years ago, six years ago, eight years ago, I was around 15 kilogram lighter. And it's crazy how, how much a little bit of weight can uh, impact your pace across like five, 10 kilometers. Absolutely mental. This is where parkour becomes very practical. Check this. It's the only practical parkour you'll ever do. Just to excuse me not wearing a top, it's pretty hot out today and after all that workout, I'm sweating. But what I always do every day just to get my weight up, get enough calories in, is I make a shake. And you don't necessarily need to make, have a shake after a workout. The anabolic window where people believe you can't wait more than half an hour, an hour after workout to get protein in is complete bullshit. Uh, the main thing with protein and calorie consumption is, I mean there's a hierarchy. The number one thing should be that you get enough in. 
Um, timings really does not matter, especially if you're not an elite athlete. But all I do here is I pop in one banana, I get myself some decaf granules. Um, I'm not a fan of granules, but for the sake of making the shape, this helps a fair bit. I put around two teaspoons in uh, there, just to give it some flavor. Uh, on top of that, I, what else do I pop in? So on top of that, I put in plenty of soy milk. Obviously, being vegan, I can't have dairy. Um, soy milk is pretty high in protein. These are fortified too, so loads of vitamins as well. I'm gonna put that to around 700 milliliters there, perfect. I'm gonna pop in some flax seeds, again, high in fiber, decent in protein, high in ALA, you know, omega-3. I'm gonna pop that in, and then two supplements I'm gonna pop in is some protein powder. Ignore that, around 30 grams worth and some creatine. Now creatine is something I take every now and then. Um, consistently, you have to take it consistently to see the results. I haven't had it in maybe, I don't know, eight months. Um, but now that I'm making these shakes once again, I thought, hey, why not just pop it in nice and easy. There's no reason why I stopped taking it. It was just a bit of an inconvenience. Um, so that's essentially why I stopped taking it there and why I'm taking it now again. Um, yeah, there we go, pop in five and a tiny bit extra. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then, last but definitely not the least, is some peanut butter. Um, obviously, it's this is what? It's cheap peanut butter, but 95% roasted peanuts and then palm oil, peanuts, oil, a tiny bit of salt and sugar. And for 30 grams, it's 200 calories. And that is eight grams of protein and 2.2 grams of fiber. So a nice little addition there, just to up things a bit. Now with everything added in, that is around 900 milliliters, which won't quite fit in this. Maybe it will. Just about bloody how we're playing dangerous there. Perfect. And so there we have it. That is my day of training, essentially. I'll do more bits here and there, some odd handstands and stretching, and I'll also be getting a cold shower, which I'm doing every single day. Check out my previous video about that. Um, but that's pretty much my physical training, the set sessions I do. There will be spontaneous movement here and there, but the set session is right there. Let me know what you think. Any questions, please leave them down below. And until next time, have a lovely rest of your day.